Today we're working on a 1996 SeaDoo SPX. This is the 717C dual carb Rotex motor. First thing we're going to do is take this air box off here. You just simply push these tabs down and then slide these clips over. Now the air box will simply just lift right off of there. Be careful, some of the clips actually will come off. You don't want to lose them. Next, we have our 5mm Allen ratchet. We're going to take out these two bolts as well as these six around this air breather cover. Now the rest of the cover will just lift right off of here. Now this metal screen with rubber edges will lift right out of the carburetor sockets. Now we'll go ahead and take these last two bolts out of this bracket. And there's four bolts in here that hold this collar on. At this stage, it's a good idea to go ahead and turn the choke on. And that way you won't drop any parts or anything down the barrel of the carburetor. So you need a two millimeter Allen tool. And it's going to go right in the back side of this choke cable where it hooks up right here. Loosen that up. Next, you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench. We've undid the nut all the way to now it slides on the cable. And now this piece will actually slide backwards and the cable goes right through a little slot there in the bracket. Now this end piece will actually pull right out of the choke armatures and go ahead and screw this nut back on here just a little bit so it doesn't slide off the end of the cable and you lose it down in the... Now to get the throttle cable off, you actually have to push the throttle armature all the way forward and get a lot of slack. Here's what the barrel thing looks like on the end of the cable. It's basically once you get the slack all the way up, then it slides sideways to come out. Now you're gonna have three hoses to take off. You have the one that's on the upper part of the carburetor. This is actually the return that returns the excess gas back into the gas tank. You have the other one, which is the pulse, which operates the fuel pump. And then you have the one coming from the gas tank, which supplies the gas to the fuel pump and the carburetors. You can see here in this old junk 717 engine where the location of the oil pump is. It actually has a cable that wraps around and operates it like this. The ski that we're currently working on has had the oil pump removed, and so we're doing premix. If your ski still has the original oil pump in operation, you'll need to disconnect this cable and then make sure you get it placed back properly. Next, we're going to remove the four Allen set bolts that actually hold the carburetors to the intake. Make sure you stick a couple rags in the throats of the intake manifold. Hey, we'll be back in a little over 60 seconds and we're going to pause real quick to see if you need any eternal repair. You might say, eternal repair? What's that? Well, hey, consider your whole life and all your life. Have you ever told a lie before? I have and I'm sure you have too. We all have. Also consider, have you ever stolen something even no matter how small it was? I'm sure you have and I have too. The whole point of where I'm going with this is those two rules, lying and stealing, those are two of the Ten Commandments in the Bible which define what sin is. So if you've broken even one of those rules, no matter how small it was, that means you've sinned, and we all have. The punishment for sin is going to hell, or eternal separation from God. The good news is Jesus Christ came to this earth. He didn't lie. He didn't steal. He didn't do all these crazy stuff that you and I have done. He was totally without sin. He was sacrificed on the cross for my personal sin and yours. He went to the grave. Three days later, he defeated death, and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross was he was taking the punishment for your sin and for my sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was, what he did, you submit to him as your Lord, and you repent. And when you do that, you can have eternal habitation with Jesus and the rest of the saints for eternity in heaven. You might be saying to yourself, hey, I'm a good person. Surely God wouldn't send me to hell for all the nice things I've done for people. But the truth of the matter is the Bible says, by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man or woman should boast. There is no amount of good work you can do to earn your righteousness before God. Only faith and trust in what Jesus has done for you on the cross. Hey, let's get back to our video, and I'll have a little more information on the eternal portion of this at the end of the video. Well, the two carburetors are basically identical. There's only one of them that has a fuel pump on it, and that's this thicker piece right here on this side of the front one. As we take the cover off the one that does not have the fuel pump, you'll notice that there's a rubber gasket in here. This piece is just a solid metal cover here. Here's your O-ring gasket. And then you have a filter right here that certainly can be cleaned up. Now at the other side, we have the four bolts out. As you lift this piece up, you can actually see this is where we're going to get into the needle valve and the jets. There's a diaphragm on the back side of this piece of metal. If there's any holes in this diaphragm, it's got to be replaced. When this thing gets sucked in, it actually pushes down on this lever, which lifts up the needle pin to allow more gas to come into the carburetor. Next, we'll go and take the screw out that holds down the needle valve. And you'll notice that there's a spring underneath this lever right here. And this whole assembly will just lift right out of here. You can see how 
This piece has a sliding bar that goes through it. There's your spring. And there's your needle valve. And you want to inspect the needle valve to make sure the tip of it isn't grooved or we're going to take these two screws out and it's going to have some flappers behind. And as you take a look at this, it has a clear plastic flapper right here on the back side. And you look down here and now you've got a couple of jets down there with a rubber seal. You have two needle valves. There's a high speed and a low speed. What you want to do is go and screw them all the way into the hip bottom and count the number of revolutions so you know what the setting was. And then you can back them all the way out for cleaning purposes. You might want to take a picture with your camera so you kind of know the orientation of where they're at before you mess with it. And a lot of times I'll put a little scratch on the carpet or body so I kind of know where to reline it back up at. When you take this needle valve out, notice that there's actually a rubber o-ring that goes around the perimeter of it and sometimes that o-ring will get stuck down in the hole and you won't realize it and then when you're cleaning this thing up you'll end up losing the o-ring. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this low speed jet out of here so I'm gonna go ahead and soak this thing you know maybe even overnight it'll get everything loosened up so I don't strip this up. I have some of my Ken Dip carburetor parts cleaner and we can actually just drop the whole carburetor in there and let it soak overnight and that will loosen up that needle valve. As for the fuel pump side, this comes off in several sections. You see the first section has this pulse diaphragm here. It has these rings here, pushing gas through one, pulling it back, and this is how it pumps. So if these plastic rings here you know, are peeled up at all, then you'll want to go ahead and replace those. The second layer will come off. I used my screwdriver and I got the two layers separate now. As this comes off, you can see there's another one of those plastic flappers on the back side of that. Another diaphragm. I want to make sure it doesn't get any tears in it. There's that same unusual shaped O-ring. Here's our filter. I like using a little bowl with some gasoline in it. And I have my little cleanup brush. And I go through and I kind of kind of clean up all the surfaces. We've got our carburetor cleaner. And I like the one with the tube on it. I also like to take a little piece of electrical tape and wrap it around the end. And that piece of electrical tape will actually slide down to help me seal up little passageways when I blow, blow them out. So we have several different jet holes right here. We've got a jet right here. We've got a jet down here. So let's go ahead and blow these through. So if there's any stuff in the passageways, slide my electrical tape down top of it. And, and you actually will see it come out inside the carburetor. Do the other one. And again, you'll see that one come out in the carburetor. Let's go and blow through our places where our needle valves went through. You should always wear gloves too to keep this stuff from getting on your hands because it's not good for you. Okay, we get our high speed jet. Clean up a bit. Stick that back in place. Remember when we took them out, the high speed was at about a quarter turn out. So what we'll do is we'll take it all the way in to the bottom. That's the bottom. Now I'll back it back out a quarter. That's where it was when we first started working on this. The same on our low speed. You'll notice on the back side of this piece there's actually a little clear plastic flapper. And See when I stick the screwdriver up to here, see how she kind of raises up just a little bit. So you want to make sure that basically this is laying perfectly flat. We decided not to put a carburetor kit in this one. This has a lot of the OEM parts in it, which I think are a little bit better quality than some of these aftermarket carburetor kits, but that'll be up to you. As you go to put this cable back on, this is the accelerator cable. Understand these nuts can go forward or backwards on the bracket that holds it. It could be when you're actually bringing your accelerator all the way down, it may not be opening the butterfly valves all the way open when you're pulling the trigger. Make sure you clean up all your surfaces both on the carburetor and on the intake. If you don't have a good seal on this base gasket and you go out and use your machine, it actually could create a lean fuel mixture condition on one cylinder and will ruin the motor. Likewise, sometimes it can actually rev out of control on the trailer if you have a leak around one of the base gaskets. Hey, as far as the internal portion I was talking about, if you're not sure you know who God is, 
I encourage you to just to pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, if you are real and you are out there, I pray you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that prayer, he's going to answer it, and you will know he is real. At the point you know he is real and you're ready to accept him as your Lord and Savior, the gospel is so simple. All you have to do is just pray like this. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of God. You took the price for my personal sin on the cross. I surrender my will to your will as Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, and accepting me into your eternal habitation. That's just how simple it is. But the catch is that just saying those words won't do anything for you, only unless the heart believes the words that you're speaking. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. Hey, if you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot more information about your walk with Jesus Christ. That's eternalrepair.com. Thanks for watching.